We are near Dorset, Muskoka, in Ontario. Um, my name is Elise Muller. I'm a stone sculptor. I share this space with my husband's friend Hamilton, who's a furniture maker. That's why we're called Stone Tree Studio. Um, I've been carving since 2001. I first uh, took stone carving at Halliburton School of Art and Design. And um, it's really come full circle because now I teach there in the summers. When you first come through the gate at Stone Tree Studio, you'll see some gargoyles or actually they're officially they're called grotesques because they're not water spouts coming out of the architecture. Here we have some of my gargoyles. Uh, there's like a whole family here. This is the first one I did. I call her Feeler and she's out of Indiana limestone. Uh, the second one I did is Screecher, this guy here. <laughs> and um, then I decided they needed a pet. So I carved this sort of like a pet dragon for the gargoyles. So yeah, it's kind of fun. Something different than I normally do. I had fun carving them this year. Uh, there's something about the negative energy with the pandemic. I just decided to carve some gargoyles. So anyway, there's some out there. They're limestone and one of them is um, Carrera marble. Uh, normally I do uh, figurative work, which is some of it's over here in the sculpture garden. I've got um, a pregnant torso. And I have a couple hugging. And over here is um, a male torso. And all of those are carved out of Indiana limestone. This uh, grotesque here is carved out of Carrera marble. Um, when I carved it, I didn't think of it as a gargoyle or a grotesque, but it's part fish, part dragon, part woman. And now that I've gotten into carving the other grotesques, I realize that she fits in quite nicely with them. On the other side, you can sort of see a fish. I can move the uh, foliage for you. Yeah. So that's Carrara marble from Italy. Um, over here is uh, Halliburton Dolomite, which is like a local Dolomite with quartzite that I carved. It's a portrait bust of a woman who's named Sheila Snow. And here we have our bridge. Uh, walk over our pond. There's lots of frogs that live in the pond and usually lots of lilies as well. This is my maquette of attunement. I call this one attunement one. It's carved out of St. George red granite. And it's of a mother holding her child up in joy. And it was what I used to apply to the Canadian sculpture competition. And I did a larger version out of St. George red granite as well. And um, I have a photo of it in the studio you can see. So that's a picture of attunement, and it's in Kingsbury Garden in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. It won first place in the Canadian Sculpture Competition in 2018. I first found that piece of stone. Um, I was doing an artist residency at Cura, which is the Kingsbury International Residence of the Arts in St. Andrews, and I picked that large slab of granite because when I looked at it, I could see the shapes of a sketch that I had done years ago of a mother holding up her child sort of in joy and happiness and I could see that in the stone so um, it was really meant to be. So welcome to the studio. There's uh, as you can see 
There's lots of uh, figurative sculpture that I've carved. Um, there's blue alice, alabaster. This is called Blue Streak Mama. This is called Sunny Mama, carved out of calcite. And this is Lover's Mother, Wise One, out of alabaster. This one here is called Dipping, and it's alabaster, um, and it's got a pin onto a soapstone, green soapstone base. Uh, several years ago, I was carving a sculpture for the Dorset Health Hub near where I live. So I ordered a big block of yellow limestone and I hadn't seen it. And when it arrived, it was like magical because it was a little bit taller where the father is a family walking in the, in the fall. And so it was a little bit taller where the father ran and like I just really could see the figures inside the snow. So it was perfect. I'm really happy about that. And sometimes uh, you don't realize until you're polishing up a piece, um, the actual true colors of the stone. So um, the attunement, the sculpture that's at Kingsbury Garden in their permanent collection now, um, it has a black granite inclusion in it, which I didn't know about when I picked the rock. It was just looked like it was red granite. And the, where it ended up being was like a perfect circle in between the mother and the child that she's holding up in joy. So it, it was sort of like I polished it up. So it's like a black granite cosmos. Um, it represents the connection between mother and child. So it's really, yeah, it's really neat when that happens. This one key over here is called Bridge Pose. And it's uh, inspired by doing yoga. And it's sort of a transition between my figurative and into the abstract because it's quite stylized. Uh, my abstracts, they're, they're over here. The, the first one I ever did is called um, Transition and it's carved out of alabaster, um, pale pink alabaster. And then I carved um, Wildness, which is a raspberry ripple alabaster. And then I carved um, this one over here, which is a brown alabaster. And um, this orange one here is uh, like an orange alabaster. You can turn it around to see the other side as well. And all of these abstracts were inspired by actual rubber band shapes that, um, you know, when you take them off a bag, they just unfurl and become like a really interesting shape. So sometimes I take photos of those and they inspire me to do my abstract sculptures. I have a little bit of wildlife. I have uh, this little fox family here. They're out of the orange alabaster as well. Over here is a uh, um, basking. It's inspired by a bearded dragon that we had. And it's in Aurora marble, which has got beautiful uh, camouflage swirly greens and in it. So um, I had a lot of fun carving that guy. There's a little bird here called Catch out of orange alabaster. And under the um, table here is the <laughs> green frog that I did called the water tester. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I do even small things like um, amulets. And so very small things to very large things. I think my smallest sculpture is this little guy here. You can see that one. It's in Maltese limestone, which um, a lady who'd been to Malta gave me, which was really exciting because I I would love to go to Malta. And um, yeah, it's my tiniest sculpture. So I just get a block stone or a piece of stone and I just start to carve away and see how it evolves. Other times I'll do sketches and 
clay or plasticine or uh, plaster mo models. So I'll do those little maquettes first and then that helps me map it out on the stone. So um, then I would draw some sketches directly on the stone, the profile of the stone, and start to carve away. So with the larger stones, I use um, some power tools, I have an angle grinder with diamond blades and I just kind of slice and then I use my chisel, a big chisel and mallet and I remove all those pieces of stone that I don't need and keep working on it like that. Um, then of course I use some different chisels, um, tooth chisels and flat chisels and smaller chisels and I use, um, I have a diamond cone that I can put on my grinder too and, and a diamond ball and then, then those can like also help to smooth it out and, and shape it too. So I do have rifflers and files and rasps and I use those as well by hand to file things smooth. Then um, with the smaller sculptures I will use waterproof sandpaper and different grits to polish it all up. With the um, harder stones I would use a uh, diamond like diamond backed uh, sanding sponges and sanding pads that can go on a polisher and I can use those. And I also have um, just diamond cloth that I can use to get into the smaller areas to polish it up as well and different grits. So you start with something like a 60 grit and work up into the thousands. So it's quite a process. Um, but hey, if you wanna come with me uh, to the workshop, I I'll call it my stone shack. I will be starting uh, to carve a block, another block of Carrera marble. So um, it's from Italy, and it's uh, sometimes a bit intimidating because, you know, I just it's such a rare, precious thing. I don't want to mess it up. So, but I I know what I want to do. So I'm going to carve. So come with me, and I will demonstrate. Welcome to my stone shack. <laughs> So um, as you can see, this is the Carrera marble that I've abstract that I have started to work on, just on this one side mainly. Um, I've been using my um, grinder with a diamond blade to slice, to slice it, and then I take my um, chisels and mallets to remove the stone like that. When I first decided to do this sculpture, I did a sketch um, first to follow along um, out of charcoal. And I also um, played with some plasticine to come up with how it would look three-dimensionally. So that helped me to map it out on the stone. Um, uh, when I'm carving, I always wear a respirator because it's very dusty and you don't want to get the dust in your lungs. And the face shield protects me from the stone chips getting in my eyes, so it's important to wear that.
I have a gargoyle that I started working on over here. This is um, another limestone gargoyle and I, I wanted to leave some of the, the stone um, I wanted to leave some of the natural stone because see there's little bits of moss so he's actually actually you can see it better on this side probably the bits of moss um, so I actually carved him right out so that he's on a cliff that's gonna I'm gonna leave like the natural limestone and then I'm carving him and um, quite big you can kind of see on the back how there's his wings and his tail and there's lots of work to do still, but it's starting to take shape. Yeah. <laughs> and um, some of my tools here, like uh, this is a bush hammer. It comes in um, really handy to do some texture. So you can see kind of like this, uh, like little divots there is from hitting it with the bush hammer. I have uh, some of my chisels are here, like there's one, a regular one, and then one with teeth. So the two chisels come in handy as well. And I have some of my rifflers are here and rasps. So these are good for um, shaping and smoothing the stone. So I can do that right now. Yeah. You just go in one direction because if you go like that, you dull the tool, the riffler, but you just go in one direction. And um, the round rasp is great for like, if you're trying to get into a spot with like a groove in it like this. And that's handy too. It, uh, it's got pretty um, big teeth, so it take, removes a lot of stone. Um, when, my, when I'm using power tools on the larger stones, I also have um, some diamond tools that are great for um, shaping and smoothing as well. I have a diamond cone and a diamond ball. And these are really handy when I'm carving. Um, I've got in here, I have my um, polisher, which has lots of different diamond um, pads that you put on, kind of Velcro on. And they're from like anything from like 60 grit up to like 8,000. And that's good for uh, sanding. For the large sculptures. But uh, for smaller things, you can use um, waterproof sandpaper to, to sand. And also you can get um, diamond backed uh, fabric that you can just sand to get into the grooves because that polisher is only good for like flat surfaces. So yeah. I really love carving stone. I'm very passionate about it. I carve um, from very small to very tall pieces of stone. And some of my work is for interior, some of it's for exterior. So I have a lot of pieces in the garden. Thank you so much for coming on a virtual studio visit today. And if you're in Lake of Bays, uh, near Dorset or Baysville in Muskoka, please come by for a visit. Thank you. Have a good day.